As many flashy cars drive toward Dublin, crowds gather and cheer. A race has just finished, and though the French have placed second and third after the German Belgian team, the local sightseers loudly support them. Jimmy Doyle rides in one of the cars with his wealthy French friend, Charles Sagan, whom he met while studying at Cambridge. Two other men ride with them as well Sagan's Canadian cousin, Andre Revere, and a Hungarian pianist, Viona. Driving back into Dublin, The young men rejoice about the victory, and Jimmy enjoys the prestige of the ride. He fondly thinks about his recent investment in Sagan's motor company business venture, a financial backing that his father, a successful butcher, approves and supports. Jimmy savors the notoriety of being surrounded by and seen with such glamorous company, and in such a luxurious car. Sagan drops Jimmy and Viona off in Dublin so they can return to Jimmy's home, where Viona is staying, to change into formal dress for dinner at Sagan's hotel. Jimmy's proud parents dote on their smartly dressed and well connected son. At the dinner, the reunited party joins an Englishman, Ruth, and conversation energetically moves from music to cars to politics, under the direction of Sagan. Jimmy, turning to Irish English relations, rouses an angry response from Ruth, but Sagan expertly snuffs any potential for argument with a toast. After the meal, the young men stroll through Dublin and run into another acquaintance, an American named Farley, who invites them to his yacht. The party grows merrier, and they sing a French marching song as they make their way to the harbor. Once on board, The men proceed to dance and drink as Viona plays the piano. Jimmy makes a speech that his companions loudly applaud, and then the men settle down to play cards. Drunk and giddy, Jimmy plays game after game, losing more and more money. He yearns for the playing to stop, but goes along nevertheless. A final game leaves Ruth the champion. Even as the biggest loser alongside Farley, Jimmy's spirits never dwindle. He knows he will feel remorse the next day, but assures himself of his happiness just as Viona opens the cabin door and announces that daybreak has come.